Hey yo, what is up? And welcome to Ninja Geek Games. Now, before we start, unfortunately, my Facebook account was recently hacked and it's currently disabled, so I've lost all access to Ninja Geek Games page. So if you could do me a favor and hit the subscribe button here, that would be awesome. It'd really help me out. Thank you very much. Um, now, in this episode, that's uh, something a little different. We're going to take a look inside the contents for Gloom of Killforth, but not as an unboxing. We're going to complete a setup for Solo Game um, and look at the contents as we go along. Now, this is because um, in this game there are a lot of cards and it may look overwhelming to those who have not played a game with this magnitude before. Uh, and at first it could be uh, difficult to distinguish all the cards into separate decks. So help me help you. For those not familiar with the game, Gloom of Killforth is a one to four player gothic fantasy game where players take on the role of heroes to visit strange locations, defeat enemies and gain powerful artifacts and spells. The game has a day and night mechanic where the land falls into gloom and the hero must defeat the ancient before the whole land comes to this gloom. Now I missed the uh, Kickstarter for this but was lucky enough to pass the Hall or Nothing stand um, at UK Games Expo in 2019 where they were selling a few copies. Um, I managed to purchase a copy from none other than Tristan Hall himself. Um, and it was no doubt an absolute pleasure for Tristan to meet me. Uh, so let's take a look inside. So we'll set up the game um, and discuss any of the cards that come up as we go along. The first thing we need to do is create the map where you place the Sprawl City card in the centre of the table. The rest of the cards will be shuffled and randomly placed in a 5x5 five five grid around this Sprawl City card. Locations are used to form the map of Killforth that heroes can move about on. There are 25 locations with Sprawl City being the centre of the map. The locations are arranged around Sprawl City in a 5x5 five five grid. And the locations all start with the colour side up, um, but can be flipped during the game to their gloom side. Each of the cards will have a terrain type, as shown here, a name, any shortcuts that let them move to that location as if they were adjacent, and special abilities. So this array of 25 location cards is called the map, with all the cards having their colour side face up. So the next thing we need to do is choose our heroes. We need to select a race and a class. Um, so you can do this by selecting one or doing it randomly. I think I will play as a vampire. That will be my race. And the class that I'll play, I think I'll choose an assassin. Note that this game map doesn't come with the game as standard. Um, this was purchased separately. So this is just a few examples of the race cards and class cards that can be found in the game. The top row are the race cards and the bottom row here are the class cards. Now for the uh, race cards, each race bestows a set of different values for one of four attributes and that is fight, study, sneak and influence, which will be used when taking different types of um, encounters. A hero can choose um, to play as either male or female by flipping over the card, now, otherwise they're identical. Now each of the card will show a name, the fight value of the attributes, maximum hit points of that hero, any keywords, abilities, flavor text, and this here is the goal that that hero starts with at the start of the game. For the classes, this is their occupation, and each of the cards will show its name, attribute bonuses that will add to the attributes of the hero they're associated with, keywords and skill types, and ability that defines class ability. So the next thing each player does is choose a three card saga set. So I've taken my saga set here, um, Assassinate Lord, seeing as I'm playing an assassin. Um, so I've got my chapters one and two here, three and four here, and my finale and totem cards there. The saga is the epic story of adventures uh, that the hero undertakes and to win the game the hero must first complete their saga. Each hero receives three saga cards um, at the beginning of the game consisting of a chapter one with chapter two on the reverse, a chapter three with chapter three on the reverse and a finale with a totem on the reverse. Now each of these cards will have a name, any keywords required, attribute values, locations, as well as any abilities and goal values that can be seen on the uh, totem card. Each hero then places all the skills of their class skill type face up 
um, beside the table. Now we are an assassin class shadow, so I take all the shadow um, skill cards here and place them at the top of the map there. Skill cards represent the abilities that a hero can gain whilst adventuring in Killforth, and they come in four types of arcane, martial, pious, and shadow. Each of the cards will have a name, keywords, abilities, the level of that card, and the ability special effects. Next, we take the uh, night deck, give it a shuffle, and place it at the top of the game map with an area for a discard pile. These night cards represent the growing danger of Killforth, and at the end of each day, uh, a night card is drawn that indicates which location descends into gloom, as well as resolving an effect which usually uh, spells trouble for the heroes. Now, this is the back of the night cards, and the front will have the name, the location, the type here, and any effect associated with it. Then we take the encounter deck, separate the cards, shuffle them, create four separate decks, uh, one for each terrain type. So we have the plains down here, then the mountains, forest, and badlands, making sure you've got an area for discard there. These are the encounter cards that uh, represent dangers faced by a hero when moving to or searching a location. Heroes can collect these defeated encounters into the hand as rumours, which aim them when completing a saga. They'll have a name, location. The back of the cards will show the uh, location types of here, badlands and mountains. They can have a gold value. There are attributes associated with them here as well. Now, the top four are actually from different Hall or Nothing Production games. Uh, this is the life form from the game Life Form. I won't be using this because it absolutely smashed me in the last solo game of Life Form I played. Uh, and these here are from 1066 Tears to Many Mothers, but can be incorporated into this game. If you like copies of these, you need to uh, purchase the games. And if you haven't got them, I suggest you do because they are also awesome. Next, we take the reward cards, separate them into the four separate decks, give them a shuffle and place to the side of the board. So we have uh, the spells, titles, items and the allies. Now, it wouldn't be a adventure fantasy game if you weren't able to reap some awesome rewards. Uh, so these are just some of the reward cards that you can get in the game and they come in four types as items, titles, spells and allies. Each of these can boost a hero's attribute uh, and provide bonus actions um, and other abilities to help a hero during their adventure. They usually come in two stages. Um, rewards earned by a hero when encounters are defeated go into the hand as rumours um, and then a hero can discover a reward by going to the listed location and playing a discover action to put that card into play. They'll have a name, gold value, any abilities um, here shows the, this is the back of the cards and it shows what uh, type that is. We have title and allies. Any attributes associated with the card would be shown here if present. So once they're placed, the hero can select a deck, draw two cards, have a look at them and choose which one they want to keep. I think I will choose two item cards. I've got a winged helm and a doom shield. Not really sure what these do. Uh, so I will... Keep the Doom Shield. Shuffle these back into the deck. Players then need to locate the hero standee and place it in the Sprawl City. So this is my standee, which actually represents the assassin and not the vampire. All the loot tokens that come in the game from the punch board are placed into the drawstring bag and just placed to the side of the table. Next, the players need to collect um, some of the tokens available in the game. I've kept these off camera um, just for the time being, but we need four health, four fate tokens, one gold, four enemy tokens, and you select these of one particular colour. And lastly, four action points. There are also six die that come with the game, and I'll just stick them here for the time being. The last few things we need to do are shuffle the ancient cards and draw one. Um, so I've done that, and I have taken the uh, Deacon of Betrayal. I really like this card. I think it looks like one of those um, Cenobites from Hellraiser. 
and we also take its associated ancient abilities card and they get placed at the top of the board. You then need to look through the deck of plot cards that match their ancient, um, shuffle them into a separate pile um, for each ancient in the game. Uh, we've only got one, so we just need one deck here and place them face down beside the ancient. So these are the ancients and the plot cards that come with the game. Now the ancients here represent beings that the hero must track down um, and defeat, and they'll have a, a name, hit points, fight value, um, gold value. And each of these ancients has a matching ancient ability here. Um, and it's this is a card detailing its abilities and effects which take place each night phase. Alternatively, you can um, shuffle these cards to randomly determine an ancient's ability for extra play variety. Now the plot cards here are placed uh, by ancients during the night phase and are similar to encounter cards but they have different requirements to defeat before they can be claimed as rumours. If left unresolved they make the ancients more powerful. And this is the uh, back of these plot cards. And there you go, that's the end of the setup. So I hoped that um, either helped those new to the game organise the decks easily as well as give a better understanding to what's inside the box. Um, now, before the end of this episode, I just have to say what an awesome job the artists have done on this game. Uh, so take a bow, Anna Kraskowska, Roman Hoddick and Jackie Brown. It's awesome. Um, if I can figure out a way how to do it, um, I'll also put a link to the previous Ninja Geek episode for Hall or Nothing solo card game Velwraith uh, that recently completed a successful Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is uh, Ninja Geek Games. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah.